Hello. Welcome to a video AI for fighting the area moment of inertia, also known as the second moment of area. We use the abbreviation, the capital letter I, to represent that shape property. You see here the dimensions and geometry of the shape that we've got to find the moment of inertia for. Well, the first step we've got to do is find the centroid, because everything for the moment of inertia is going to be based on that centroid. So we'll use our basic equation for finding the centroid when the composite shape is made up of standard subshapes, and we'll break it down into three separate rectangles. Then using this equation to build a chart or table, we'll populate that table with the area, the distance from whatever point of origin we choose, and the center of each individual section, and then we'll have the product of the area times that distance. So simple area calculations for each of the three rectangles yield these numbers. And we need to pick our CPO, or our common point of origin. Noticing that this is symmetric about this vertical axis, we'll choose a CPO that makes use of that. Therefore, we only have to calculate one centroid, the Y value. And now let's start populating this column for the distance from the CPO to the centroid of each section. Shape number one is 3 plus 10 plus 1, 14 inches from the CPO. Shape 2 is 3 plus half of 10, 5, so 8 inches up from the CPO. And finally, shape 3 is 1 and a half inches up from the CPO. Now completing the multiplication to get the products, we end up with these values. Making use now of this table to calculate the actual centroid, we realize that we must sum this product of the area times the distance, as well as the total sum of the areas. So we can do that. In this final row, substituting our values into our equation, we find that the centroid is 8.375 inches, not quite complete, up from the CPO. Now that we know the location of the centroid, we can find the moment of inertia. Recognizing that these are all rectangles, we know that the moment of inertia for a rectangle is bh cubed over 12. But that's the moment of inertia about its own neutral axis passing through its own centroid. So we've got to make use of the parallel axis theorem since the neutral axis of the composite shape doesn't pass through the neutral axis of any of those subshapes. So we'll make use of an equation for the parallel axis theorem that says that the composite moment of inertia about the neutral axis is equal to the sum of the individual moments of inertia about their own neutral axis, plus this product of the area times a distance squared. And that distance is the distance between the neutral axis of the composite shape and the neutral axis of that individual subshape that we're considering. Just like for calculating centroids, this equation yields itself wonderfully for a table to organize our calculations. So we'll populate the columns and rows headings just as such, built off of this equation, and for our three composite shapes. Now for a rectangle, we know again it's bh cubed over 12. For shape 1, the base is 12 inches. The height is 2 inches. So we cube the 2 inches, divide the product by 12. For shape 2, 3 inch base by 10 inch height. And for shape 3, 6 inch base, 3 inch height. Computing those, uh, we end up with these values. Again, this is just the area of the rectangle, so we can populate it with those values found from each of those individual rectangles. And now the distance from the neutral axis of the, sin of the composite shape to the neutral axis or centroid of each individual shape. So for shape number 1, Remembering that it was 14 inches up from this base point, the neutral axis of the composite shape is 8.375 inches up. That distance is 5.625 inches. Now, shape number two is very close to the centroid of the composite shape. In fact, it's only 0.375 inches away. And for shape number three, it's 6.375 inches. Now notice I put a negative sign on these two terms because they are below the neutral axis. Now in this calculation it won't matter because we're going to square that term and that negative sign will, uh, will go away. Negative times a negative becomes a positive. 
But this concept becomes important for other calculations, where we're above the neutral axis being a positive value, below the neutral axis being a negative value. So we'll remain consistent at this point. Now it's just time to multiply the area times this distance squared to populate these final cells for each of these three subshapes. Now, going back to this equation for the parallel axis theorem, we know we need to sum the moments of inertia and this area times distance squared. So let's do that. And let's rewrite our parallel axis theorem like this, where we now just have to add up the individual moments of inertia and the individual areas times that distance squared. Substituting in our values then, we end up with a moment of inertia for this composite shape of 1,767 inches to the fourth.